all things Randy at randyrhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Let us be very clear at the start here tonight. <laughs> this is an incredibly weak, baseless, convoluted indictment. It is bizarrely centered around what is clearly protected speech, zero criminal <laughs> statutes, because there are none that were applicable that are actually written into law. It is based on an obscure law from the Civil War. So let's be even more clear. This indictment is frankly not worth the paper that it's printed on. This is a political persecution through and through. Okay, so uh, first of all, insurrection, which is what he's saying is an old timey civil rights, uh, civil war. Uh, it's not even charged here, okay? He did, did. Hannity, I didn't know Hannity couldn't read. Uh, how, 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 how is he getting it off the teleprompter? Are they talking in his ear the whole time? I don't understand. I did not know he couldn't read either that or he chose not to. He chose not to. Uh, the federal code of criminal conduct, the federal code, the statutes that denote criminal chargeable offenses we all know this here okay is uh usc 18. anytime you hear 18 usc 18 usc that means criminal federal uh uh-oh okay so i won't repeat the uh 18 usc portion but i will tell you that he's charged here with 371 which is conspiracy to defraud the united states which would be you uh Count two is uh, section 1512K, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, which we learned has like a 20 year sentence associated with it because you just can't do that. Okay, Uh, count three is uh, section 1512C2 and uh, two, obstruction and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. And four is section 241, a conspiracy against our free speech yes the only free speech that's mentioned in here that's being uh you know a uh, uh, tagged for destruction is yours and mine what do i mean by that okay well the conspiracy against rights is a conspiracy against those of us who voted in the 2020 election and what is voting Voting is your voice. It is the way you speak. It is the way you choose. It is the way you let people know who you would like to lead you in your state, who you would like to lead you in your uh, House of Representatives, who you'd like as your representative there, who you would like to represent you in the United States Senate, if applicable, and who you would like to represent you in the White House. And he tried to rip you off to take away your voice, your free speech. Okay, and how do I know this? Now we read. Okay, in the introduction, which if Hannity had bothered to read just two paragraphs here, just two, he would have known that the defendant, Donald J. Trump, was the 45th president of the United States and a candidate for re-election currently in 20, uh, or actually in 2020. The defendant lost, hello, the defendant lost the 2020 presidential election. It is not up for debate. That is a provable, demonstrable, true fact. Number two, despite having lost, the defendant was determined to remain in power. So for more than two months following Election Day on November 3rd, 2020, the defendant spread lies that there had been outcome determinative fraud in the election and that he actually won. These claims were false, and the defendant knew that they were false. But the defendant repeated and widely disseminated them anyway to make his knowingly false claims appear legitimate to create an intense national atmosphere of mistrust and anger and erode public faith in the administration of the election. So those are what he those are the things that, uh, you know, he did behaviorally and the reason why he did it. It was to remain in power. It was to deprive you of your choice, which was Joe Biden, clearly. Now, they go on to characterize in paragraph three what Donald Trump did behaviorally is different than what Donald Trump did in his speech, okay? Because they say this in paragraph three, Sean, the defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election 
and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he'd won. He was also entitled to formally challenge the results of the election through lawful and appropriate means, such as seeking recounts or audits of the popular vote in states or filing lawsuits challenging the ballots or the procedures or both. Indeed, in many cases, the defendant did pursue these methods of contesting the election results. His efforts to change the outcome in any state, though, through recounts, audits, or legal challenges, were uniformly unsuccessful. So this is what we've been talking to you about for the last two days now, that the way that you decide that you've been defrauded in an election or the way that a president can challenge the results of an election, the legal ways he has, he can say whatever he wants, according to Jack Smith. Jack Smith is not in the mood to actually police speech, okay? That's not his wheelhouse. It's not what he's going after. He's going after behavior and actions that were unlawful. So he actually says there are lawful ways to actually, uh, you know, object. There are lawful ways to address. There are lawful ways to challenge. And all of the lawful ways, going to court, asking for an audit, doing a recount, were all unsuccessful. He went to court 60 plus times, and in all 60 cases, Donald Trump lost, okay? He lost. He was able to do uh, some unlawful things, though, and that is what this indictment is about. The unlawful things he did, not the lawful things. And he's, everybody is giving him free speech. Everybody is giving him incitement to riot. Everybody is giving him tweeting lies. Everybody is giving him threatening Mike Pence. Seriously. None of the things that I just told you are being charged here are speech violations or, you know, not permitted speech, which I gave you great examples of. None of it. This indictment deals with a five-part caper. I don't know what else to say. It was a five-part crime. The crime actually addresses unlawful behavior that says, number one, you can't lie to legislatures. Okay, we've gone over this with Rudy because there's actual tape of Rudy lying to state legislatures to get them to create fake uh, electors, uh, to get them to take back the electors that had already been certified by the Secretary of State and the governor of each and every state. You see, we this, this indictment picks up after all of the election results are certified, after all of them have been audited wherever he requested they be audited, after all of them had been recounted wherever he requested recounts, after all of them had been certified by Secretaries of State, Republican and Democratic, and governors, Republican and Democratic, in every single state and territory. That's where this indictment picks up and looks at the unlawful behavior. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.